What's going on everybody, it's Dilbert and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to continue working on Netcode for Game Objects. And specifically we're going to be looking at the client network transform that is going to be different to what we did before by declaring network variables for the position and rotation. In this case the actual client is going to synchronize that information to other clients automatically by just using this component. I'm also going to be adding a new camera component that is going to allow us to use a third person camera by using a network implementation. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. So in the previous videos, I show you how we can capture input and then send that information to the server. The server will keep that information and then synchronize it to the client. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different and I'm gonna introduce you to the client network transform, which is actually pretty handy because it allows us to now have control of those inputs and basically the component itself is responsible for synchronizing that information with the other client. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Window Package Manager. And if you go into the Package Manager, you already downloaded the Netcode for Game Objects, but if you look into the samples, there's gonna be a client network transform that you can import. Okay, so it looks at like the finish importing. I'm gonna go ahead and close it, and then we're gonna be cloning the relay scene. And this one is gonna be with client transform. So we can just say client transform and then just hit enter. And the way that it's gonna work is we're gonna be adding the component to the player control, but I'm also going to be creating a new version of that. So I'll just go ahead and clone it. And we'll go through how this is gonna work. So we have player control authoritative. So let's just go ahead and name it that. Because I, again, we're gonna have full control of the input. So there's gonna be a few changes in here that we're gonna need. So in the past, we had to have the server track these variables and we don't need to do that anymore because this component is going to allow us to do that. I'm also going to add a new required component on the very top for this one. So we can also rename this, it's gonna be authoritative. And then I'm going to say, this is gonna be the client network transform. It's gonna be one of the required components, which comes from the samples namespace. And we don't need to track the old position and new position because we're gonna be changing how that works. We're still gonna be needing the state because we need to apply the animation. So the server is still gonna be responsible for that. We still need the character controller because we still need to move our character. We also need to have the animator for animations as well. So if we go down here, a couple of things that we're not gonna need is we don't need to, we don't need to do any, let's see, let me go down, okay. We don't need to do any of this stuff anymore because the server is not gonna be processing the position and rotation. So I'll just go ahead and remove that. And then the other thing that I also do here, so it looks like I also, yeah, I also added the left shift so that you can do a run animation. So this is, this is kind of new information in there. So the other thing that I'll have to do is we can move some of this and I also, I don't need to do this method anymore. And we can go ahead and remove this. So, we're still gonna capture the input, so this is fine. And we're also going to be, you know, doing the visuals, which is going to run the animations. But the new things that we're gonna be doing here is, I'm just going to move this out, which is gonna be the rotation and also the movement of the player. But if you remember, we did the network position direction, which we were getting that from, you know, from the RPC and then the RPC, the server RPC will, will basically process it. So what we'll do now, instead of doing that, we'll just grab this information now here. And then I'm gonna just multiply by the speed, which is what we were using before. And then for the rotation, I'm gonna do that as well. We're just gonna do this. And then I'll just multiply by the network speed. And now we have basically full control. So this is authoritative. When I say authoritative, that means that the client is responsible for moving itself which means that because we have this component here, which is called the client network transform, this is gonna do all the magic. It's going to send it to the server, I'm sure. It's gonna be responsible for synchronizing everything, but we don't need to do all the tracking that we were doing before. But if you wanna keep it simple and you wanna do it, you know, how I was doing it, because you wanna track specific variables, you can do that as well. We also don't need to do this anymore because the server is not responsible for doing that but the server is gonna be responsible for updating the player state so that we can do the, the appropriate animation. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to modify the prefab that we had before, but I don't wanna change this one. I want to add a new one. So I'm just gonna sell, this is gonna be authoritative as well. And that's gonna be a long name, but I think it's, it's okay. We can double click on it. 
And then if we double click it, we're gonna see that we have the network transform here. We don't need that anymore. I'm gonna remove it. I also don't need this player control because we have a new one that we're going to be using. So I'll just go ahead and remove it. And then what I'll do is let me collapse some of these so you guys can see better. And then this one is gonna be the new one, right? The player control authoritative. So I'm just gonna select that. You're gonna see that this is gonna have sync position X, Y, and Z, the, the actual angle. X, Y, and Z, the scaling. If you don't need a scaling, which in our case, we don't need it, we could basically just uncheck it. And you also have the other variables that we had in the network transform. The script that I have in here has the speed, rotation speed, the initial position on the plane, and then also the player state. So I think this is all good to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go back and then we need to change the player, the actual player control that we have in the network manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and then just change it to the one that we just created. Everything in here should stay the same. We're not changing how this is implemented. We're just changing how the player is gonna sync its position so that we can basically move the player around in a, in a different way. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and test it and make sure this is not blowing up and I don't have any errors. So I'll just wait here and then I'm just going to go ahead and do a start of the host. And then you can see that everything is working, right? I, I mean, there's there's no clients right now connected. I also added a run animation so we could do some different things, but everything is working the same way that it was working before. What I'm gonna do though, is I wanna show you this still works if we have another client connecting. So I'll just add the new scene here. I'll go ahead and uncheck that one. All right guys, so I have a new build here. Let's go ahead and start the host. And now we can see our player, it's working. I can move it around. And this one obviously is gonna be player zero. So on the other client, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting my invitation code, which is PWGBN9. Click on a start client. And then as soon as I do that, you're gonna see that we can move the player. The player is getting moved on both scenes, right? I can move it here. I can also move my player here, which is player one. And everything is working the way that it was working before. So we know that the client network transform is working correctly. So the next thing that I want to do just to test the, you know, that out is I also want to create a new type of control that is going to be using physics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new 3D object here. It's going to be, or we can just call it the player, the player ball. And it's gonna be a very simple ball that we're going to be able to move with physics. So I'm going to also add a rigid body here. This is gonna be, that is going to allow us to, you know, basically move the, move the ball around. And then I'm also going to be creating another component that is going to require uh, the, the actual client network transform. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. And then what I'll do is we can just clone, we can probably just clone this one. And then I'll just tweak it around so that we can use physics. So I'll call this one, it's going to be the player ball control, or you can call it the ball control. It doesn't really matter. That's just the name, right? And then we can go into it and then I'll have to just change a couple of things. So we don't need to, we don't need to do this because I'm not gonna do animations on it. I also don't need the player controller. I don't need that. And I don't need that. So I'm gonna be basically removing a lot of these things. So the default initial position on plane, this is gonna be, this is gonna be fine. I'm not sure why it's currently airing out. We'll fix it here in just a minute. But I have, you know, I have my require, I have my variables, I have the initial position of this guy here. And what I'll do here, I think this is all fine, I'm not sure. Okay, so we'll just fix that in just a second. And then we're gonna need, we're not gonna need a visuals, we're just gonna be capturing the input. And then I don't need any of that. And then here I'll just leave the very top one because we're just gonna change. Okay, so. What I'll do here is we're gonna be basically capturing how we're gonna be moving the moving the ball. So I, I still wanna do the client input, so, which is why we're gonna be doing here. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be capturing the horizontal, the horizontal uh, axis. So I just do input and then get axis. And this is gonna be horizontal, just like we did on the, on the previous video. And then I'll just do one for vertical as well. And then we'll just do vertical. So this is gonna give us basically both, both directions so we can move so we can move the ball around. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, okay, if vertical is greater than zero or vertical is less than zero, then I know that my actual vertical is, is changing, right? So we can 
use that if we want to move the character forward or if we want to move the character backwards. So, and I also am going to need here the, the actual rigid body. So we're just going to say rigid body and we can say ball rigid body. And then we also capture that on the awake method. So I'm just going to say it's going to be public and then I'm not sure why the awake is not coming up. I think I have something in here that I broke for some reason. Okay, so let's go ahead and comment out this. And I'll just comment out this. And I think everything it's everything it's compiling. Okay, so that's fine. Not sure why. Okay, so I'll just do void and then awake. And then we'll fix it. We'll let Unity tell us what's wrong. And then I'll just get rigid body, get component. And normally I would cut these scenes because I don't like making mistakes, but we all make mistakes, so I'm gonna leave them. I'm going to leave them in here. So, okay, so that looks good. We can just say client input because that's going to work. Okay, and then on the actual movement, let me see, okay, I know why. Because the class is now colliding and you guys are probably laughing at me right now because you knew what the issue was, but there we go. So that should work and then now we should be able to uncomment this. And there we go. And I think, I think everything in here, oh, I think I just did, let me do undo, undo. Okay, there we go. I was using my keyboard to uncomment and I hit the wrong key. Okay, so that looks good. And I think everything here looks fine. We don't need a server RPC because we're not gonna be telling the server to do anything else. And then in here, what I can do, it's gonna be the ball rigid body. And then we're gonna be adding a force but the force that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to basically check, okay, if this is greater than zero, then we're going to be applying a specific force that is going to go in the forward direction. So if we're doing this, then I'm going to multiply it by this. And then I'm going to say that I'm going to move, I'm going to multiply the forward vector by the speed. Otherwise, we're going to be multiplying it by the backward speed. So I'll just say that. So that should allow us to do basically forward and, and going back type of movement. And then I'll just go ahead and clone this and then we can do this and then we can do this as well. And then this one, it's going to be very similar. I'm just going to do right. So it's going to be the right direction. And then this one is going to be that left direction. So the last one that I want to do, I just want to make the ball fly. Why? Because I want to do it. There's really no, no specific reason. I just wanted to do something different. And then here I'll just do key code. And then we'll just hit the space key. And then if we're pressing, if we're pressing the space key, then we're going to be adding a force so that the, the, the player actually goes up. And then we'll just do the same thing that we did above it. But in case, in this case, it's going to be multiplied by this, the, we can do it by the fly, fly speed, but I'm going to do, let's do a new variable here. And then I'll just say fly speed. So I was going to multiply by that, but let's just introduce a new one. We can just do that for now and then we can tweak it later. I'll just multiply by that. And, and that's basically all we need to do to, to apply physics because this has a client that we're transform. It's just going to synchronize magically and automatically because Unity do G Unity did mo most of the work there. Okay, let's go ahead and test it out. And to test it out, I don't want to change this one. I'm going to be creating a new one. And again, I'm going to try to keep all the scenes intact so you guys can test it out. And we can just clone this one. And this one is going to be with relay, a ball client, or you can just say client ball. Oh, this change, these names might change. I might uh, go ahead and change it if I don't like it. But just know that that's, that's where they are. But you're going to have all the scenes anyways. Okay, so I just added that to the scenes. And we have that scene added. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to change the player prefab here that we're going to be using. And we can just search for ball, which I haven't created a, a prefab for that. So I forgot about that. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is we already have this. I'm going to create a prefab, but we need to, I, I like to keep things clean. So I'm just going to do that the ball is going to start at one. It's going to have a zero position of X and a zero position of, of Z. And I also need to add the client well, in this case, I already had a required component, so we can just add the component, the player ball control, and it's gonna add all the required components for us. And, and that's the beauty of doing, you know, these things like this because it allow us to not make mistakes. And I can also remove this as well, which we don't need. And I think everything else I'm going to need. Okay, so I think, I think we're good to go there. 
So if I go back into Unity, what I'm gonna do is I now, I'm going, I'm going to need to create a prefab. So we added those components. So let's go into here and go into my prefabs folder. And I'm gonna drag the player ball, which I already created, and now we can delete it. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play and see if this is going to work. So I just wait for Unity and then we can do a star host. And we can move our ball around. I can fly, fly ball, fly ball, and uh, it's working. So, and if I do execute physics, everything is working and I have another ball, which is kind of camouflaged with the other balls. Okay, so that's great and all. And, and I mean, that should work just like I did if we were to do a build like I did on the previous demo. So what I'm gonna do now is I also want to make some changes on the, on the camera. So some of you asked me how you can add a camera that you could actually move. So to do that, I'm going to also clone, in this case, I'm gonna clone this one. And then this one I'm going to call, let's see, we can just say with follow camera, with follow camera. And yeah, these names are gonna get long, but it's gonna keep things nice. And then I'll just go ahead and add this one also to my build settings. And in this case, I want to, I want to add the player, but it's going to be the player that I was using before. And we can go ahead and add the, this one right here, which is the player amateur network authoritative. But we're gonna be changing how the camera works in this one. And I also need to delete that. Make sure, let me make sure that I delete it from the other one. So this one, we don't need it there. And that one looks clean. And then on the client ball, I shouldn't have a ball there in the network. Okay, so we're good there. So now let's go back into this scene. Okay, let's just keep everything clean. So what I'm gonna do here in the, in the main camera, and there's many ways that you can do this, but I'm gonna be adding a cine machine virtual camera. Well, before we need to do that, we need to do the, the actual brain. So if you search for brain, okay, there we go. So once you add the brain, you're gonna see this icon here, and I think everything in there is fine. And then I'm also going to be adding a cine machine virtual camera. You're gonna see that it's going to be changing how the camera looks. And then because we're creating the player dynamically through code and the network manager is doing it, we're not gonna be able to assign the player here on the follow you know, manually. We're gonna have to do it through code, but we're gonna be doing something simple to do that. And I'm also going to be changing the body. I'm gonna say third person follow. And then we can change some of these distances as we, as we test this out. I'm also going to be creating a new script. So this is gonna be a very simple script. And this is gonna be player camera follow. And then we can hit enter so that it gets generated. And then we can go ahead and double click on it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete these methods in here. And we're gonna create this one as a singleton. So it's gonna do singleton and then control period. So we can bring it in. Let's try that again. And then it's gonna be just taking a generic. So in this case, it's gonna be this guy. And then on the awake method, I'm going to be getting a camera. So how do we get the camera? Basically the camera is gonna be attached to, to this component. So I'm gonna say that we're gonna be getting a cinema, cinema machine and it's gonna be a virtual camera. Make sure that you do a control period. And then we can just say this is gonna be cine machine virtual camera. That way we can get, basically we're gonna get a reference to that. So it's gonna say get component and it's gonna be the cine machine, cine machine virtual camera and then we can assign that. And then we can add another method in here. It's gonna be attach or follow player if you want to call it that way. It doesn't matter. We're basically gonna be passing the, the transform that we're going to use a, basically the third person controller to follow. And then here I'll just say cine machine, follow, and then transform. So pretty simple. There's really not much going on in here. I'm just getting a component which is a reference of the virtual camera, which is attached to the object that we're gonna be assigning to this class. And then the follow player is just basically gonna tell the camera to follow the player. And Unity did all the work on this, so we don't need to do coding in there, which is, which is beautiful. And then what I'll do here, I'll just copy this. I'm gonna go into our player control. And remember, this is when the client, when we own the client and when we are the owner, is when we are going to be making changes. So. I'm just gonna say the, I'm gonna call the, the component that I just added, which is called the, let's see if I can find it. Okay, there we go. Player, camera, follow, instance. And then remember, we added the, a new method in here. And that new method was follow player. And then we just gotta pass in the player. 
So in this case, it's gonna be a little bit different because I can't just attach this because of the way that the armature is set up. So I'm gonna do, but in most cases, if you're doing a camera, uh, basically you want the camera to follow a specific game object, this is what you'll do. In my case, because I'm using the, the armature, the character that the, the Unity implemented, we're gonna be attaching that to this game object here, which I'm gonna copy from my other monitor, which is gonna be the player camera root. And this is all we need to do to basically follow the, the have the camera follow the player. I'm, I'm getting confused. Okay, so let's, let's go back in here into Unity. And then, so now we need to make sure that the main camera has the script that we, that we just created. And you guys are gonna see that it's gonna, it's gonna make it look so much better now that we have a camera. Okay, that is going to follow the player. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and hit play. And if everything works, we should see the camera changing and following the player. So it's gonna go ahead and hit start host. And you can see that now we can run. The camera is following the player. And now it just feels more like a game, right? We're, we're using the, the player like a third person type of camera. So what I'm gonna do as well here, if I go into my Cinemachine virtual camera, you can change a couple of these settings and, and they have a lot of cool settings. I could do an entire video just going through some of these settings. So I think I'm gonna change this to maybe, let's do, I think I can do a four so we can see everything on the distance. And then on the noise, I can also do a basic multi-channel purling. It's just gonna move the camera a little bit and we can do something like maybe a handheld normal mile. And I think some of these are just way too aggressive. We can just do something like that. Maybe the frequency can also be 0.5. I just want it to be very subtle. I don't want it to be too drastic, but I just want you to feel like the character is breathing. So we want to give the, you know, the sensation that that's what's happening. So we can see that everything, you know, camera is working, it's following the player. And we should be able to test this out also by using, you know, by building it. So I'm going to do that next. So let me go ahead and hit play. And then I'm also going to go and change the settings that I had on this character. Oh, actually it was on the main camera. So let's go into the main camera and then paste values. And then, yeah, this one is gonna be missing because we didn't assign it, but I should see the purling noise. Okay, so if I don't see it, that's okay. We'll just add it here. I have the camera distance. I think I did it as a four. And then I did a mild purling noise, which 0.5 and then 0.5. I think we can do, we can go with those, with those numbers. Okay, so now that we have that, let's see if this works with all multiplayer implementation. And this is with follow camera, so we're good to go there. We can just go ahead and build it and test it out. Okay guys, so I think the camera was moving around too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and change how the follow player works. So we're gonna go ahead and get in the virtual camera. And I'm also going to get a cinematic component. So if we do this and we can say Cinemachine, the Cinemachine basic multi-channel purling. And then this is gonna give us the options that we need to, to basically change it once we attach the player. And then what I can do here is I need to change the amplitude. I think it's, yep, the amplitude get. And we can, I believe I can change it. Hopefully this is not a, this is not a, a value that I, it's just not a getter only. Okay, it looks like it is, it is a setter as well. And then I can also do the gain is the amplitude gain, let me try that again, frequency gain. So we can change these ones in here and maybe add them as parameters if you like to, I'm just gonna keep it as simple as that. So when we attach the player, we're gonna be attaching the player here, we're gonna get the parallel component and then we're gonna be applying these two. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm just gonna add those as, as different variables here. We can say amplitude, amplitude gain, and we can set it to 0.05. That way we can change it. And then the other one is going to be the frequency. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this. It's gonna be the frequency gain. And we can do that as well. And make sure that you spell amplitude correctly. And then we can make it serializable. Serializable fill here. And then serializable fill in here. And then we can just say, you know, we can add the variables instead of hard coding things. For some reason it bugged me to hard code anything okay so let's see if this is going to work here because the camera was just going all crazy because it didn't have a, a player to to attach itself to and then if we hit you know if we hit play we should be able to see the player now and it should now start moving as soon as we start the scene because we haven't really added anything so right now if i go back in here actually the okay yeah these ones are set to zero and that's what we expect this one should be set to 0.5 and 0.5 
And then as soon as I, I add the host, we still, yeah, we should see the amplitude gain and also the frequency getting set. And if we wanted to change these values, again, you can change them. It's not gonna change these ones in real time because we're only setting those when we start the, basically the networking game. So what I'm gonna do now is we can build it and then go ahead and test it out. All right, so I got the scene built. We have four different clients. So I'm gonna make this one the host. And as soon as we do the host, I mean, we can move our host in here. And we have an invitation code, so I'm gonna do 7W, oops, let me do that again. 7W, and it's not case sensitive, so I can just type lower cases if, if I wanted to, and I'm gonna copy that, and you're gonna see that now we have basically a third person controller working, which actually, it looks it looks more real, right, when you start adding polishing faces like that. And then I can do another client in here. Now we have another client, and, and that's currently working great. So let's go ahead and try that one in here as well with a much larger client. And we can see player one there, player, player zero, and then player two is right there. And I can run around. I can probably push him a little bit, maybe, 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 no, no. Well, no, because I haven't really added any more <laughs> implementation for that. But that's everything that I wanted to share you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And I'm gonna be checking this in to get help. So if you wanna see more multiplayer videos, make sure that you subscribe and also let me know in the comments because that's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you very much, guys.